It was a town that time forgot, shrouded in perpetual twilight under the dense canopy of its surrounding forests. Ravenwood, a place with wooden homes that creaked like old bones and streets where whispers sometimes brushed past the ears of those unlucky enough to be out after dusk. Sylvie had always known Ravenwood was different, but it wasn't until the night of the Autumn Festival that she truly understood the dread buried within its heart. Sylvie, with raven-black hair and eyes that betrayed the secrets she held, was a librarian by day. By night, she nursed curiosity and unease for a history steeped in shadows. The townsfolk avoided the topic of the old Ravenwood Manor, perched upon a hill overlooking the town. It had stood abandoned for centuries, its windows broken and doors ajar, like a mouth waiting to swallow the unwary. Tales of disappearances and blood-drained bodies found in nearby woods were whispered, but never openly spoken. As the autumn festival reached its peak, with laughter echoing and lanterns casting eerie glows, Sylvie felt a pull towards the manor. That night, the veil between the present and the town's sinister past seemed thin. Armed with nothing but a journal and a candle, she dared to step through its decrepit gates. Inside. Silence reigned. The air was thick with dust, and every step she took echoed through the empty hallways. Sylvie could feel the weight of eyes watching her every move, though the halls were void of life, of sorts. She was led to a room by an inexplicable compulsion. Ancient portraits lined the walls, eyes seemingly ablaze with intent. At the end of the room, a curtain billowed, though there was no breeze. Drawing it aside, she gasped, a hidden door slightly ajar. Behind it, descending stairs were carved into the stone, leading into darkness. With her heart a drum in her chest, Sylvie descended. The air grew colder, and the shadows seemed to close in around her. At the bottom, she found herself in a crypt-like chamber. Stone coffins stood lined up, but one was disturbed, lit ajar. She approached, and a figure stepped out from the shadows. Tall, with pale skin that seemed almost translucent. His eyes, dark voids, locked onto hers. Sylvie, he whispered, her name like a caress in the cold air. Her breath hitched. How did he know her name? I have been waiting. She tried to scream, but it was as if the very shadows stole her voice. The vampire, ancient and once lord of the manor moved with a predatory grace. You shouldn't have come here, he said, almost regretfully. She backed away, but the stones felt like they had hands, grasping at her ankles. Memories of the tales sprang into her mind. People lured to the manor, never to be seen again, their blood painting the stones red. He was upon her in a breath, cold fingers brushing against her warm neck. And then, Another voice cut through the thick air, a voice of authority and anger. Release her. From the shadows stepped an old man, carrying an amulet that glowed with an otherworldly light. The vampire hissed, recoiling. Father Lucas, Sylvie whispered, recognizing the town's old priest. The vampire's eyes flashed with recognition and anger. You meddling cleric, the vampire spat. Always one step behind. Father Lucas didn't flinch. This ends now. With a word, he cast a blinding light from the amulet, searing through the darkness. The vampire screamed, a sound that echoed through the hallways and into the nooks and crannies of the old manor. When the light dissipated, the vampire lay motionless, nothing but a skeleton draped in rotting finery. Father Lucas approached Sylvie, helping her to her feet. You should never have ventured here alone, he admonished gently. I had to know, Sylvie said, her voice trembling. And now you do, Father Lucas replied. The manor's curse is broken, but at a cost. Ravenwood will be free, but the shadows will remember. They left the manor as dawn broke, the first true dawn Ravenwood had seen in centuries. The townspeople woke to a sense of liberation, though none knew the true ordeal Sylvie had faced.